It was Leclerc versus Verstappen again, but this time the outcome was different. Max Verstappen takes a win in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Here to review the Saudi Grand Prix. Pretty mixed bag of emotions here. It was a decent race. It was actually fun. It was entertaining. But at the same time, there was a few things that spoiled this race. And most notably, I'm just going to straight off the bat come out and say it. Nicholas Latifi sucks. This guy's not good enough to be in F1. He shouldn't be in F1. You know, he played a huge part in the title uh, going to Max Verstappen last season. And he, he's played a huge part in basically costing Sergio Perez a race win here. Now, I know accidents happen. I know safety cars happen. I get that. I totally get that. I'm not complaining about that. But it seems to be this guy all the time. He's not fast and he always seems to crash. So what is what's the advantage of having this guy? Um, you know, it's just a it's just a guy that's there cause of money, and I don't think we want to see anybody on the grid purely because they have money or because they're being sponsored or there's like money behind them or their dad owns an F1 team. I mean, F1 ideally would be the twenty best drivers in the world on the grid. That would be F1 in an ideal situation. I know you're not going to get that, but let's be real. Nicholas Latifi is not in the top twenty. He's not in the top 40. Is he even in the top 100? You know what? Probably not. Probably not. So, you know, it sucks that he is continuing to... And the fact is, I mean, Albon's not even that good, but Albon's been made to look great because Latifi sucks so bad. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But let's talk about the start of the race then. The, the five lights go out. Press gets off to a good start. I think they were anticipating Leclerc challenging Press into turn one. But no, Press got off to a really good start. Held his position. Looked comfortable. Um, Max Verstappen got past Sainz into turn two. Sainz kind of been held up by his teammate Leclerc in front. Kind of got boxed in. So Max went around the outside. Managed to get the overtake. Put two Red Bulls into the top three positions. And then I, I, reckon, I think from the start, people were kind of expecting if Perez held on to the lead at the start, he would effectively be holding up. Uh, the two Ferraris in the Red Bull of Max Verstappen's teammate, but that didn't happen. Perez was actually the, the quicker driver out of the four, and he was pulling away. If, if anything, he was pulling away from the three behind him. Um, Sainz was kind of falling away. Max wasn't really challenging Leclerc, and then Leclerc began to pull away from Max, but Perez consistently, you know, was building a gap, and it was, it was small margins, but lap by lap, he was increasing over Leclerc and then it got to about two point about two and a half seconds it, it kind of fluctuated between about 2.3 to 2.7 but you know Perez did get that sort of gap a gap that I guess would be on the verge of an undercut we don't know but 2.5 would it be enough we don't know um so Leclerc and Ferrari thought they had the better tires so they were prepared to go longer in the meantime Alpine of Alonso and um, Ocon were, were just pure fighting with each other. Um, they seemed, at, at the start of the race, they seemed to have the pace of George Russell, but they spent so much time battling with each other. I mean, Russell was allowed to just get so far ahead of them that they, they lost, the gap was huge, and then I think maybe they, they were too hard on the tyres because by the time the alonso Ocon battle finally kind of stopped and it took about 15 laps to stop they'd already you know there were a huge gap behind russell so they weren't really going to catch him but i mean alonso tried to overtake him down the outside on the pit straight and Ocon aggressively made a move after a, a very late move alonso almost ended up in the wall not quite as bad as michael schumacher barrichello and hungary but you know i guess it was a wee bit similar and then when alonso finally did get past he he basically squeezed Ocon out and almost put Ocon into the wall, I guess maybe, you know, some payback. This allowed the likes of Magnussen, the likes of Bottas from behind to challenge the Alpines. But, I mean, the Alpine car looks decent, but it's, it's, I don't think it's as good as people are making it out to be. Uh, then we get to the first round of pit stops. Leclerc is told that he's coming in. Uh, obviously, Red Bull respond to this. They bring in Perez, therefore... Leclerc stays out. Perez comes out just behind George Russell. He was close to beating George Russell out, but not quite. Put on the, the hard tyres. At this stage, you're thinking, you know, if unless Perez nails Russell at the first opportunity, he, he might lose out the lead of the race. But he didn't need to nail anybody because it was Latifi that nailed the wall. And surprisingly, even though you could tell this was going to be a safety car, the worst possible result for Perez happened. They brought it 
a virtual safety car, which allowed everyone else to come into the pits. So Max came in, Leclerc came in, Sainz came in, the whole grid came in. They all pitted. And as soon as they were leaving the pits, they brought out a full-scale safety car, which is mad. I mean, they were in the pits when they brought it out, so they, they weren't losing any time. Perez had wasted all the time, um, you know, abiding by the, the virtual safety car limit. And then as soon as the front three had made their pit stops, that's when they brought out the full-scale safety car. So, I mean, the timing for Perez could not have been any worse. Now, had the, the safety car come out straight away, I think Perez may have held on to the lead. He certainly wouldn't have ended up in fourth place. He would have... I think he would still would have been in front, but maybe he would have come out behind for starting, uh, behind Leclerc in second, but I, I still think he would have maintained the lead. But yeah, no, it, it made no sense. It was almost as if whoever was in charge here just decided to screw over Perez because nothing changed from the moment he decided to use a virtual safety car to the moment he decided to use you know, a full-on safety car. You could tell from the, the, the crash straight away that, that Latifi made that you need a, you need a full scale safety car to to get that car out of there. A, a virtual safety car was never going to get his back racing. It was never going to clear the track. But they brought out the virtual safety car just to. It seemed like just to screw Perez. That, I mean, that's honestly what it seems like. I'm not saying it was, but that's pretty much the only purpose of the virtual safety car to demote Perez from first down to fourth. Uh, so yeah, Perez comes out in fourth. There was a bit of a squabble with Sainz. He thought he'd beat Sainz out the pit lane, but he had to give back the position. Um, we then get back underway, there's some decent race and Hamilton decided not to pit, but we a couple of other people uh, later on, Hamilton had to pit late on, it didn't really work out for him, he finished 10th, uh, and then we had a battle between Verstappen and Leclerc, and they swapped positions, Leclerc again did what he did in Bahrain, let Verstappen go through and then managed to re-overtake him, and Leclerc was trying his best, I mean, at times there was Max complaining, saying that Leclerc was... Um, crossing this, the line of the pit entry, saying that Leclerc was speeding under yellow flags. You know what, I, I actually really do not like Verstappen. He gets on my nerves. I mean, I'm, I'm glad he won the title last year because I wanted a change. I was sick of Hamilton winning it. But, I mean, I'm definitely on Team Leclerc here. I hope Leclerc beats Verstappen if it's going to be between those two for the title. Eventually, Verstappen did get past Leclerc. Um, he waited, just got out the last turn onto the straight. And he was right behind him, and Leclerc didn't have really any, have any chance of making a move. Leclerc did come back towards Verstappen the last couple of laps, but every time he would get near him, they would put out a yellow flag, and it's like he couldn't overtake him because I think it was Albon, Albon pulled over to the side of the track. So, I mean, that sucked. Uh, there was heartbreak for Alonso. He lost drive, and it was funny because him and Ricardo kind of got stuck on the pit lane exit. Hamilton, or the pit lane entry, Hamilton still needed to pit, but couldn't pit because there was two cars on the, the pit lane uh, entry. It was, it was weird. It was a weird race, but it was fun. You know, there was definitely overtaking a failable, and uh, yeah, in the in the end, it was Max Verstappen won by just over half a second to Charles Leclerc. So, yeah, solid race, good race, enjoyed it. Not the winner I wanted, not the winner that deserved to win. Would Perez have won without the safety car? Honestly, we don't know. I think it's too. It's, it's, it was too early to tell. I mean, he was handling it well. He was looking good in the early goings, but we don't know what would have happened. You know, after the first round of pit stops, we don't know what would have happened when Max starts putting pressure on Leclerc. Would that speed Leclerc up? Would Leclerc put pressure on Perez? We don't know. But it would have been really, really interesting because we haven't seen that scenario really. You know. We haven't really seen Perez leading with Max Verstappen chasing behind with a Ferrari of Leclerc sandwiched in between. So I thought it was going to be a really, I was really looking excited. I was excited to the prospect of seeing that, but thanks to Latifi, we don't get it. Anyway, the order, Max Verstappen in first for Red Bull. Then it was a double Ferrari podium. Leclerc and Sainz second and third. Perez coming home in fourth. He must be disappointed after getting pole yesterday, but here, like, hopefully... Hopefully he's not too downhearted. I mean, it wasn't his fault. I definitely feel like he was better than Sainz today. I think Perez at least deserved a podium, but unfortunately didn't get it. Uh, Russell in fifth for Mercedes. Kind of just a drive of his own. It was a solid drive for Russell, but, you know, he couldn't really compete with the four guys in front. And thanks to Alpine squabbling with each other, he never had any, you know, issues with people behind him. Uh, Ocon in sixth, Norris in seventh. Gasly 8th, Kevin Magnussen again getting points in ninth. Lewis Hamilton rescuing a point in 10th. I mean, it's mad that the 7-time world champion, you're considering a point a pretty good result for him, but that's what's happening. Uh, Gohan Su in 11th, Hulkenberg 12th, Lance Stroll 13th, Albon 
14th, Bottas, who was doing well, had to retire late on, unfortunately for him. And 15th, Fernando Alonso, again, would have scored points, had to retire, unfortunate for him. Daniel Ricciardo, another guy that had benefited from people retiring in front of him, he had to retire as well. So he didn't get any points. Latifi, we've all spoke about, absolute garbage. Shinoda didn't get to start. And Mick Schumacher, um, obviously had that. At shunt yesterday, couldn't start. I don't know why there wasn't, um, Haas weren't allowed to use a second driver. You know, I don't know why they weren't allowed to use their second car with their reserve driver, whoever it is. Is it Fitz or Paldi? I'm not too sure. But anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, for starting wins, it was a good race. It was exciting. But I, I think we were denied an even more exciting race because I just think we, Perez in first, with Leclerc and Verstappen behind them, you know, that, that would have been a, a, an intriguing freeway battle but we didn't get to see it and what would have happened if Verstappen got in front of Leclerc and then we had the two Red Bulls going at it you know I mean would it have been like the Fettel Weber days we don't know you know multi-21 we don't know we were denied it by Nicholas Latifi anyway guys that's it let me know your thoughts down below catch you later but until next time this is before Grayson peace out